I think Terry Pratchett was pretty damn good at his job. So it is official here on the channel. The next series I will be going through and reviewing each and every entry from is going to be Discworld. Probably my second favorite, I'm pretty sure, on that fantasy series of all time, and one that I've done shockingly few actual reviews of. For those of you who don't know what Discworld is, it is one of the longest fantasy series ever written and one of the best-selling. Terry Pratchett's Discworld has 42 books in it, and while they are on average far shorter than a Wheel of Time or Malazan book, the just cumulative number of stories means Terry Pratchett's fantasy epic dwarfs in size most of his peers, and that goes to the overall size of the actual world of Discworld as well. This is one of the deepest conceptualized fantasy worlds ever to be written. The further you go into Discworld, the more you are rewarded as a reader for catching up on countless references or developments of pieces of lore that all complement each other from various books within the series. This has inevitably begged the question, where should I start Discworld? That's actually one of the most common questions I get about any fantasy series, period. And there's no definitive answer. While I don't think Colors of Magic is the best Discworld book by a long shot, it's still the first in publishing order, and there are many people who argue the best place to start Discworld. I personally advocate from just picking from one of the many larger sub-series within Discworld, each equally great ways to just enter Discworld. But the very best of Discworld can also a lot of the times be read on their own and be perfectly enjoyable stories within themselves. So I still think it's absolutely fantastic to start with something like Small Gods. But with any of those picks, you are likely to end up missing references you would have have to have consumed other Discworld books to get, all of which results in the entire 40 plus book series being incredibly rereadable, assisted of course by the notorious exceptional humor within Discworld. And that humor seeps into all aspects of the storytelling, of course, with even world building elements like the fact that Discworld is a literal flat planet on the back of a turtle with elephants in between. It's what? And it ends up being no wonder why Discworld has continued to be one of the just fan favorites of the genre it's within, well beyond the unfortunate passing of its author. But today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite Discworld books that you could actually technically start the series just reading, and that would be Going Postal. You follow a protagonist in this book named Moist von Liptwick. Yes, that is probably the most unfortunate name for a protagonist ever in the history of everything, yet you inevitably fall in love with him because he is the con man with a heart of gold, a trope that just so many people are gonna instantly be hooked by. A witty protagonist who's able to use his wit to overcome challenges, constantly hounded by maybe some of the darker shades of their past, it's just enticing conceptually. And he is forced into a situation where he is responsible for restoring the post service to the largest city in Discworld. At the beginning of the book, we see our con man under a pseudonym hanged for his crime times of conning before he resumes his actual birth name and is assigned to take over, yes, the post service by a lord who just does the best job of using a threatening speech with angels to really hammer home to Moist that he is screwed and going to have to follow through with this task. Now, despite this, of course, our con man does try and escape, but is hunted down by his parole officer, a golem who you will fall in love with. Now, why did the Postal Service go out of service? Well, a lot of reasons, city bureaucracy and a weird time portal, but really the main conflict currently for the Postal Service's return is the invention of the clackers. These futuristic seeming devices developed by a private industry have been charging citizens far more to be able to send instantaneous messages over long distances. Instantaneous, but like, not really. Only when compared to sending a letter. I'm not gonna go any further into the plot from there, that's just kind of the initiating incidents, but you can already probably accurately call quite a bit of this book. Terry Pratchett isn't trying to break the wheel in terms of countering the hero's journey or anything like that, but it's about the quality of the execution of the concept and the just lovely details that are so enjoyable that make Going Postal such a special book. Not only is there so much intelligence in the humor, but that transcends over into realization of theme and getting into like, actual facts around 
industry and how people don't appreciate certain public services that really leave you thinking, laughing, and just actually immersed in a story and world that are written in prose that are maybe as notoriously as the humor, just so consumable yet sophisticated. I mean, there will be jokes that are set up real world references that are somehow justified within the text. And they're also having like fun with fonts here, risingly gory jokes at some points and darker chords within the world itself that are vastly overshadowed by the more positive tone. But I feel like what doesn't get talked about enough is on a narrative and character level, Terry Pratchett actually is really genius. When I got to a specific line about perfection and freedom, I actually had tears in my eyes on the plane back from London. But I also earlier in that very scene had a moment of being like, that's one of my favorite characters from another book. Oh no, they're here. And that is why Discworld ends up ranking among one of the actual largest fantasy worlds that just takes itself far less serious than pretty much any other epic fantasy world on that level. But all right, getting back into the details of Going Postal and not just ranting and raving about Terry Pratchett as an author as a whole, yes, Con Man Moist ends up becoming the postmaster general of Ankh Morgok Morba Ankh Morpok, sorry, and utilizes his talents as a con man to successfully breathe some life back into this business. But the pushback Moist goes up against in response to the revitalization of this public service reflects a lot of the real world vitriol that results in many public service workers getting extremely underappreciated or even abused. Which I read this book in conjunction with Mark. Martha Wells' upcoming release, Witch King, which I did like overall, but I found myself while reading these two books simultaneously feeling such a difference in terms of the story's ability to consistently make me feel placed within it. Many times fantasy worlds that are so elaborate or tonally flamboyant can kind of push you out of the immersion because you find elements of the world that don't exactly line up or it becomes so overwhelming it ends up just souring the read. Thankfully, that just doesn't happen and you feel so connected emotionally due to Terry Pratchett's wonderful imagination and quick wit, establishing reasons to love these people so fast. My favorite example of which being a golem that has been alive for 19,000 years, I believe, and is working to get to something I won't spoil, but it just breaks your heart with its implications, not only for that individual, but possible abuses that are happening to this class of worker of Golem that have really strong implications for the world in a larger way than going postal even seems like it earns in a narrative. This is a smaller story, but then you feel this wave that you know can echo on out and affect something else down the road within the series. And that's really what I mean. And I think many Discworld fans, me and they talk Talk about the vibrant depth to what the overall picture is. It feels like a further development and realization of literary classic settings or storytelling tropes, but then layered in with so much more, not only from like a fun, fantastical way of the world is very deep and interconnected, but even characters like Moist end up acting as a character who not only draws you in through their initial premise and just objectively fun trope, but what this con man is conning these people into believing he now is and is slowly morphing into is a type of person we all would love to be even strive to he's so charismatic and lovable you end up wanting to be like moist and that's the delicious draw of just moving further and further through Discworld. but i'm sorry let's talk about going postal despite this yes lighter hearted tone and just absurd setting you end up still feeling just as much bite in terms of the stakes and emotional range you'll experience as you get from a Malazan Wheel of Time, you know, Lord of the Rings. When I tell you I end up hating the characters that are the corporate antagonists to our post-service workers. I mean, I hate them just as much as villains you get in Grimdark series. I actually want to dig into that a little bit more because it's not due to them being written with personalities that are as hateable as a Dolores Umbridge, but instead it's the ramifications of just how of bad people there are, which is something I've often complained about when you have like a Dark Lord they don't actually see the Dark Lord do anything that evil. We directly see that they are responsible for workers' deaths and are cutting down on things like break time. They're making choices that make you as a reader go, oh yeah, I 
hate that side of corporate greed. And of course, that is narratively reflecting the establishment of this post office, which is getting such community engagement and like support. So you intrinsically, of course, are more inclined to be in favor of that side of things. But we also have the fact that, yeah, it's being run by a con man. That is pretty much all I can say before getting into spoilers. So before I go ahead and get into my spoiler filled thoughts for going postal, I'm just going to say, it gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I cried on a plane from London. What else did you expect? But yes, spoilers for going postal because I have some more things to geek out about. Three, two, one that ending. I love that it actually gets tied into like this circle angle to it where we're seeing the Lord suddenly now, yes, sit down with the antagonist and put a similar offer on the table that we saw a uh, moist get at the beginning and it's so clever. Oh my God. It's left ambiguous. You don't know for sure. And I remember when I first read Going Postal uh, way back when I first got into Discworld, my thought at that moment was, will they show up again later in the series? And in case you've only read Going Postal and not other Discworld books, I won't reveal that. Purely going off of character though, if you look at what Moist did, why, and then you look at what is happening here, I think you actually do get your answer because Terry Pratchett likes answering questions with things like look at characterization. But that's what I mean when like, I genuinely feel as much emotional investment in Discworld as other large fantasy worlds because Pratchett's able to put these hooks in you and this emotional vibrancy that does like flourish because of the humor where you end up like really wanting Moist to get his date and you're excited when he does. And then you hear of the fire and the assassination setup is so high stakes and it ends up kind of being twisted. But then the death that ends up happening happening in that scene with death. Ah! I like grabbed Kayla on the plane, even though I knew it was coming just because like being reminded of it. Oh my God, I'm going to read all the death books again. I can't wait for that. But then it set in, death is here. Oh no. And I got to find the line. I got to find the line. Yes, I know. It is perfect. I am free. That's how you do thematic beats, baby. If you are a Discworld fan, let me know what book you want to see me talk about in the comments down below, because I want to do like one of these a week until we get through Discworld, because I think I'll have just as much to say about every single Discworld book. This is the final day, though. If you would like to pick up merch from DanielBGreen.com, head on over to the website, and you can get one of the few limited signature tees that are left that have that nice little patch in the back and bumpy delicious delightful disheveled goblin. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.